What is going on guys? Welcome back to this episode of Home Built Workshop. You remember that guitar body fail when that thing busted apart? Let's make this really sweet, inspirational clock. So not too long ago, my daughter and I were discussing some mistakes that I had made in the shop that day, and she threw out this really awesome quote, and the quote was, mistakes are proof that you are trying. Let that one sink in for a minute. She stopped me dead in my tracks when she said that because instantly it was so inspiring, and I'm so thankful that she said that to me because it's inspired this whole project. Thank you, Haley, for throwing that quote out to me because you have seriously inspired me to do some things with that. I love that saying. I will remember that one forever, and I hope you do too. I'm gonna take this broken guitar body, I'm gonna turn it into a shop clock. We're gonna have that quote on there in some form. I've also been inspired to put that saying on some t-shirts. You can check them out right now. They're available in my Teespring store. Links are in the video description. So let's jump right in, get inspired to make mistakes because I'm sure there will be some made on this project. Let's do it. I'm gonna start out by putting the pieces roughly in place and putting a couple of pencil marks on there. Basically, I'm gonna be putting this back together with some dowels. I've made up just a really simple drilling jig. It has a guide hole for the drill bit, and that will go right on there, and it is sized appropriately to give me the hole pretty close to the center. And then in the top, I've just drilled kind of a sight hole with a couple pencil marks that'll allow me to line it up with my pencil line. And that should help us get the things drilled in about the same spot. And already begins the hand sanding. I'm just gonna lightly bevel the edge of this, which is gonna help get everything lined up when we come to assembling this. There's a faster way. Belt grinder to the rescue. Now just put a little wood glue down in there and glue this thing kind of back together. My whole idea with gluing this together with the dowels was to over exaggerate the mistake. Glue. There we go. Now that I have the body glued back together, it's time to break out of the mold and do something completely different, something that I have never ever done before. My local library has a maker space with a laser cutter that is available for members of the library. And we are gonna use the laser to do some cool stuff on the front of this clock. I'll start out by engraving just the scrolls in the front of the body. Then using some scraps of oak, I'll cut out all the letters and the numbers that I'm gonna need for this project. Now doing this process with the lasers was really cool. It's something that I've never done in one of my project videos. Now in my previous line of work, I used to use lasers a fair amount, so I do have some experience with equipment like this, but I've never really had the opportunity to use them on this level and use them for my own projects. So it was really cool to be able to do this and now, I gotta get me a laser. Now let's get back to the project. Now when you use a laser, it does cause some burning and some smoke staining on the wood. There are a few ways to get around this by masking it off and doing different techniques with a finish before you burn it. But for this project, I knew that I was gonna have to sand it, so I didn't even worry about it. And now we're just gonna jump right into sanding.
Nice and clean. Now using a three inch Forstner bit, I'll drill a small recess in the back to house the clock mechanism. <laughs> well, that's not gonna work. Then I'll finish it up by drilling a 5 16 hole all the way through the body. This is where the shaft will come through that holds the clock hands. I want to put some sort of color on the body before I put the clock numbers on there. I want there to be a contrast between the wooden letters and the wooden clock numbers. So in order to accomplish that, I need to put some sort of color on the body. The question is, what color are we going to use? Recently, the Crystalac company sent me a bunch of their gel stain and paint samples. That's what I'm going to use for this project. They're all water-based and you can mix any color you need. This one right here. Blue number five, that's what we're gonna use for this project. We will start out with the clear gel stain and glaze. Make sure it's mixed up good. I'm just gonna pour a little bit into this little cup because I don't need much. And that's probably way more than I'm gonna need, but that's okay. We'll squirt some blue dye into the base. I'll mix that in really good. Oh, wow, that's pretty cool. Oh, let's play around a little bit with some colors for fun. Let's put a couple drops. A little bit of a purple blend. Let's just see what we can do around the edge. Just have a little fun. Yeah, we got a little bit of a burst effect going on there. So now that our color layer is dry, I'm really liking how this is looking. I've got it sanded back down to 220 to remove any grain that was raised. Now I'm going to take this over to my router table. I'm going to put a 45 degree chamfer on all the edges, including the broken ones. The reason I'm doing this now is because I feel it gets a lot cleaner look. If I were to chamfer this before adding the color, chances are that I would get a little bit of bleed on that chamfer. This way I have a little bit of wiggle room if I happen to have some of the finish drip over the edge, as long as it's not very far, it's going to be removed by the chamfer and it's going to give it a lot cleaner look. And you can see how clean the results are. It came out really nice. The body is almost ready for a finish. The last thing I need to do is get the letters installed. First I'll separate the letters from the numbers on the bandsaw. Then I'll cut a couple of notches in the side. This will just be like a sight hole to help me align everything. Now with the scrap piece taped securely in place on the body, I'm going to use some thick CA glue and start gluing each individual letter in place. The scrap piece provides a template and helps keep everything in perfect alignment. This worked out awesome. My only concern during this process was that I was going to somehow glue the template to the body or to the letters and not be able to remove it. But overall, it worked out great. Ah, oh, that's awesome. To mount the numbers, I'm gonna just temporarily install the clockworks so that I can put the hands on and get the location of where the hands are gonna be. So if you've never made a clock, here is a tip that you're gonna to wanna to tuck away until you do. So in the back of your clock, you have your movement. It doesn't matter which way you mount this. I like to try to mount mine straight but if it doesn't for some reason, it's not a big deal and don't let that hold you up. So go ahead and put your movement in, you install your hands, but at this time, don't worry about where they are. You wanna determine where 12 o'clock is. Long as your hands are pointing straight up, that's 12 o'clock. It doesn't matter the orientation of the movement. Nothing inside the clock works makes a difference. Point your hands at 12 o'clock, that's 12 o'clock. Nothing else matters. When you're ready to put your numbers on, you just turn your hands to the time that you need and put your number on. So there's 3.30, four o'clock. See what I mean? It doesn't matter the orientation of anything else.
Now I'll just glue on those numbers using some CA glue as well. I'm lining them up by eye based on the positioning of the hands. Now I'll remove the hands and the clock mechanism and we can get some finish on this. Shake well before using. <laughs> For this project, my finish of choice is several coats of satin lacquer. To wrap this up, I'll add a sawtooth hanger and I can reinstall the works and the hands. And there it is. Man, I don't think I can quite express to you guys how much I like this and how proud I am of the way this thing came out. I love the color, I love the satin finish. Most of all, I am so inspired by this saying. I'm so proud of the way this thing came out. I'm really happy. I can't even, I, can't, I really can't describe it. From what started off as a disaster and a major fail when I was trying to make a guitar out of this body, I am so happy with the transformation and the way this is. I will be able to take inspiration from this every time I look at it and not only knowing that it's okay to make mistakes, but I am also taking inspiration from my daughter since she is the one who gave me this quote. Now, if you have an idea of where this quote may have come from, I would like to give credit where credit's due, but I just don't know where it came from. So if you do, leave a comment down below. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I want to remind you to please take some inspiration from this saying, embrace mistakes. That's how we learn and we grow from them. So if you're not learning from your mistakes, chances are you're maybe doing something wrong. So embrace them and it's okay to make mistakes. So thanks a lot for watching guys. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, ring the bell so you get notifications and don't forget to check the video description for a bunch of links. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time.